Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I'm a galactic astrology soul reader and Reiki master teacher. And in today's video, we will be diving into and exploring together the Taurus full moon on November 15th, as well as Pluto in Aquarius, Pluto entering the zodiac sign of Aquarius on November 19th. We'll look at that a little bit too and bring in the higher guidance, a galactic heritage card message. We'll look at the Sabian symbol for the Taurus full moon, the star alignments, and just open up and see what wants to come through. Thank you so much for being here with me today in this video. Before we dive into the astrology of the Taurus full moon, I want to invite you to this very exciting class I am teaching coming up on November 19th. This is Pluto in Aquarius, Rebirth into Soul Mastery. It is a galactic astrology and Reiki class. And I did a class on Pluto in Aquarius in January. That was like the, the part one. And this is the part two. Now that Pluto is moving back into Aquarius, it feels really right to welcome Pluto back into Aquarius by exploring the galactic astrology in depth, looking at the ingress chart. We'll look at Pluto in 2025. We'll look at the star alignments. We'll look at the galactic astrology in depth. And really, this will be a very channeled class. All the classes that I put together, the information just connects and it comes together based on the group. This class will be a sacred, safe space for all levels of Reiki and astrology experience. So totally okay and open to beginners in Reiki, beginners in astrology. The Reiki portion of the class will be a channeled Reiki journey that is meant to help you bring in the higher frequencies of this 19 to 20 year long transit of Pluto in Aquarius somewhere in your natal chart, making specific alignments for you and really inviting the soul mastery potentialities of this transit into your life, your birth chart, as well as in the collective. So what better way to celebrate this transit than come into Sacred Circle together? This includes a live class together in a group, interactive group on Zoom. It will be recorded, so totally okay if you cannot attend live. It will be live from 10.30 a.m. till 2 p.m. Hawaii time. So actually, we will be together right as Pluto is moving into Aquarius zodiac sign. It's so exciting. The class will be recorded and the recordings will be posted in a private group hosted on my website. So when you sign up for this class, you will have access to this private group where all of the recordings will be posted after class. For more details and information and to sign up for class, please visit taylornorrisreiki.com. I'm so excited for this one. It really is with this class too and preparing the material. It's like Pluto just reveals its secrets. It reveals whatever is really meant to be part of the revealing process. So I'm really, really excited for this one and look forward to being in the spirit of co-creation within the new paradigm, creating that new paradigm all together, creating this new consciousness all together, empowering this new consciousness, this new energy that we are all working with together. So can't wait. See you there if it resonates with you and works out with you and for your highest good. 
Okay. So November 15th, November 15th is a big day astrologically at 421 AM Hawaii time, Saturn stations direct at 12 degrees of Pisces. This is huge. This is stillness. This is consolidation. This is crystallization. This is clarity. This is structure. This is radical empowerment and embodiment of our inner authority, of our sense of spiritual authority, spiritual connection, and can be a time too, I'm hearing, where obstacles dissolve, barriers dissolve, blockages dissolve. So that's what we can focus on. That's what we can empower at this time. Just seven hours later, we have the exact moment of the full moon and Taurus at 11.28 a.m. Hawaii time. You can adjust that to your local time. See if you can see it in the sky, a bright and beautiful full moon and Taurus zodiac sign. And what's so lovely about this full moon It's ruled by planet Venus, meaning Taurus zodiac sign is guided by planet Venus. And so we have this influx of divine feminine energy. The moon as a luminary is exalted. It's said to be exalted in the zodiac sign of Taurus. So this can be a time where our emotions are, our mental, emotional, and physical bodies come into a bit more balance, a bit more stability, also being echoed by that stationing direct of Saturn. This has a very stabilizing, grounding, earthing kind of energy to it. Taurus zodiac sign is fixed earth. So it is the most stabilizing zodiacal energy that we have within the 12 signs of the zodiac wheel. So a wonderful time to ground, a wonderful time to connect to Mother Earth. Now that said, it comes with a major asterisk here as that Taurus full moon that ordinarily would be extremely grounding and stabilizing is conjunct planet Uranus, which is all about sudden disruptive kundalini awakening energy, can be surprises, can be the unexpected. So this is this is almost like we ground, we plug in so we can receive those higher frequencies, so we can receive that awakened energy flowing freely within our body. So this there's this real dynamic dance of divine feminine inner authority, structure, stability, newness, new paradigm, and also this energy of shining the light of awareness with the full moon aspect. What are you becoming aware of in the Taurus areas of your chart? So looking in your own natal chart for 24 degrees of the zodiac sign of Taurus and looking also for the Scorpio region of your birth chart where is 24 degrees of Scorpio zodiac sign? Because these two houses in your birth chart, any planets or points that might be there are the ones with the spotlight and are the ones that are also receiving this like, woo, like dynamic influx of Kundalini energy and life force energy. This is definitely a time to be soothing the nervous system, practicing Reiki, practicing relaxation, practicing pranayama, putting your bare feet on the earth, going for a swim, 
unless it's too cold to do that. You know what I mean? Finding ways to be out in nature, however that works for you. Connecting to your body, connecting to your body's needs as well. This can be like a sleepless kind of energy too. So you may find that you have a lot of energy and that you can't sleep or maybe you're finding that you are more tired, your energy levels are a bit more erratic. So just being mindful of that, you know, maybe having your bedtime tea handy, maybe having your magnesium supplement handy. I know I like to have one or both of those handy at any given time for those nights where I'm feeling extra energized and I may know that I need rest even though I'm feeling very zippy and zingy. So just to be aware of that. This also feels like a time of heightened emotionality, potentially heightened dynamics of power and empowerment of secrets being revealed, unconscious being made conscious, becoming aware of that which you need to be aware of, and of course that rippling out on the world stage as well. I'm getting the nudge to go ahead and find where our Venus is in this chart. We see Venus at four degrees, Capricorn 54 minutes, squaring the lunar nodes. My goodness. So Venus is our guide for the Taurus full moon. She is squaring the lunar nodes, the lunar nodes connected to our collective evolutionary soul growth at this time. And when a planet is square the nodes, it's like that is the psycho-spiritual function, Venus, and the archetype Capricorn that we are meant to embody at this time so that we can physicalize and manifest and materialize. These are all very Capricorn types of words. The nature of of the soul growth that we are needing in this moment here. So there can be a feeling of compelling to make changes in relationships, a change in value. We may see this in changes in finances, the global economy, currencies, markets like that. And within us, what are our own values? What's the state of our own relationship? This can also be a call to creative expression that is also very practical and material. This could also be creativity within your business, within your finances, within the more physical and material aspects of your security. I'm hearing right now to the the question of security being very, very highlighted. Taurus is a sign that's very security oriented, is very much oriented towards physical and material security, feeling safe, wanting to feel safe, secure, comfortable, a sense of predictability with Uranus there. Of course, it's like not going to happen, feeling comfortable. I think this is expanding our comfort zone of, of what we are comfortable with and how much change we are comfortable with here. Venus square the nodes in Capricorn is also speaking to and highlighting this need for security and even reimagining what does make us feel secure. Is it our relationships? Is our is it our creativity? Is it our 
our own unique and authentic value system? Is it our communities, the sense of sacred circles that we are a part of, like-hearted and like-minded individuals? Is it our connection to the earth? Is it our connection to the stars? Is it our connection to the planets, to the herbs, to the animals, to the plants, to spirit, our divine connection, ultimately our spiritual connection, I think, is a part of our security that we are being invited to lean upon here, but also taking a very realistic look at both our spiritual security and our physical and our material security at this time and taking whatever action is needed to enhance that sense of security and support that sense of security. Because so many people are feeling so emotionally rattled at this time and like their sense of security may not be there. And I just want to hold space and honor the full range and the full spectrum of that, that people are feeling, whether it's from the election, the wars, all the different changes, the leaders, other global events, other weather events, or very private and personal relational events that are happening from more macrocosmic and collective events, global events, to the very micro personal can even be very inner sorts of events. So I just want to hold sacred space and safety for that and invite a pause, invite a breath to really just honor wherever you're at and to invite you to honor wherever you're at right now. When we look at the galactic alignments that are playing into this full moon, we see that our support is extremely powerful. It's like off the charts powerful. And that really excites me a lot and brings me a lot of comfort. And I hope it can bring you a lot of comfort too. So we can see that by the conjunct alignments on the outside of this wheel. We can also see that same information playing into this chart on the right hand side of the screen. So Sun and moon with this beautiful star, Beta Centauri, Hadar, Agena in Centaurus constellation. Centaurus constellation is the Centaur constellation. It's one of two Centaur constellations, the other being Sagittarius, which has a more warrior energy when you're looking at the constellation, not the zodiac sign. Centaurus is the Centaur constellation that's linked to Chiron, who's on his way to make a sacrifice at the altar, according to Bernadette Brady. And we can even see it as Centaurus, Chiron, this masterful healer, teacher, mentor, who was able essentially to ascend and let go of his immortal physical incarnate experience and become one with the stars and become this constellation Centaurus. So there is that that sense, maybe that old school sense of the sacrifice, but there's also this sense that I'm intuiting right now of ascension and timelessness within the stars, becoming star light, being a part of the eternal fabric of the cosmos and serving as a guide, serving as a light from the pure potential and creative life force of the cosmos. The star specifically that the sun, our star of our solar system is aligned to is a beautiful star of unconditional love, of pure love. So to know that our sun, this bastion, this 
beacon of unconditional love is also highlighting and aligning with this other star, this other sun, another beacon of pure unconditional love that we are getting like a laser beam of light focus of this unconditional pure love, that whatever noise, that whatever distraction, that whatever drama, whatever may be going on, that this love frequency is there and accessible and can be tapped into. And in part of it, I'm thinking of all the suns, solar flares, magnetic storms, solar storms, all of those different activations that we've been receiving from our sun and likely will continue to receive from our sun as we're in this time of solar maximum, according to the geophysicists and others, that We are really being blasted with unconditional pure love at this time and to rise into that and to open our hearts and our energy bodies into that. I think that's a lot of what we are really being invited into later this month with Mercury turning retrograde with the Mars retrograde happening in December, Mars and Leo, and this particular full moon, Pluto entering Aquarius. It's like, and this moon being conjunct Uranus, like we are expanding our capacity to receive love, to give love, to be love, to embody love, and to welcome in these memories and soul experiences, whether they may be past, present, or future, of what it's like to live in realms of pure love, of what it's like to be incarnate in some level of physicality, in some level of density, and be a being of pure love amongst other beings of pure love in a planet of pure love where the mainstream consciousness is resonating with pure love and unconditional love and has transcended duality and polarity and is just the love and the bliss and the harmony and the beauty and the glory and the flow, like what that is like. So we can open our minds and our hearts and our bodies and ourselves and our beings to receive that and to wake that up within us. And I'm sensing that all of the super cosmic point alignments are helping us with this integration and with this sense of attracting and magnetizing that in and like even vacuuming out any any obstructions to that, any blockages to that so that we could like suck that in, suck that life force in, have it wake up within us and have it radiate within us. So this is coming through the North Node and the South Node in alignment to the super galactic center, specifically letting go of any ancestral and lineage blocks we may be carrying, any physically embodied blockages, cellular blockages, DNA blockages that we may have any, I'm hearing too, like mutations, genetic arrangements, anything like that, that may need to go so that we can suck all that in and wake all that up within us, all of the pure love and unconditional love, Mercury with the great attractor, This is just, this is like the mental conditioning, deconditioning, deprogramming that we need so that again, our minds can be attuned and trained and receivers and givers and radiators and really like dialed in to be little antenna of unconditional love and pure love and higher consciousness, and mental manifestation. So this is a time to that I'm wanting to say don't give in to worrying. Don't give in to like spiraling out into negativity, into worst case scenarios, into 
worry and fear in Reiki. We have the five precepts just for today. I will not worry. That's the one I need reminding with the most. (laughs) I think of all of them. It changes based on what's going on, but historically that's been the one I've needed to lean on the most. So I invite you, if that's true for you, even if you're not a Reiki practitioner, if you notice your mind is worrying or you're in an anxious or frenetic state to just for today, I will not worry. And even if it's just for this moment, I will not worry. And see if you can't find something that you would like to happen to focus on I was talking to the angels last night before bed and really inviting their guidance on some things that I had been considering and a decision I had made that was bringing up some doubt and fear based on things that have happened in the past and, you know, asking them like, was this the correct decision? And what I got was yes. Yes, it is. Expect miracles. Expect miracles instead of expecting worst case situations or just taking into account. And with that expect miracles, what I mean is lean on how much you've grown. Lean on how much you have evolved and how much you are evolving and how firmly planted, rooted, devoted, and committed you are to your awakening, to your evolution, to your conscious development and your spiritual development and spiritual growth. Lean into that and count on that and find security in that and realize that if you do need mental assurance like I was needing to call on your angels, call on the archangels, call on the guides, call in the enlightened beings of the galactic center of the super galactic center of the great attractor, the enlightened beings of Hadar, of Beta Centauri, of Aegina or any of these stars on this star chart or any star family that you feel really connected to, call on the enlightened guidance of Saturn, call on the enlightened guidance of the moon and open up and listen and trust whatever's coming through around this too. You know, it would have been really easy. I know better by now, but it would have been really easy to think that that answer I was receiving was just what I wanted to hear, that I was making it up and to discount it. But I've learned to just not. (laughs) I've learned to just trust it and to take it in. I mean, this has taken years to really learn to trust. So understand that you are where you are and that's okay. But if you are hearing something, if you are receiving some guidance to Give yourself permission to just trust any reassurance, any loving guidance or clarity or reassurance you might be receiving at this time that it is divinely ordered and that you can trust it. So there are a lot of other alignments here that we could focus on. Mars opposite Altair. This is after Mars, of course, has made this opposition to Pluto, which I hope all of you were feeling to get a lot done. I know I was in the yard a lot. I was needing my walks. I was needing to do a lot of pruning, a lot of weed whacking. There was a lot of physical energy that I channeled with that Mars-Pluto opposition, and it was just wonderful for that. If the Mars Pluto opposition that was exact around November 3rd this month felt rocky or like you didn't have a good experience of it, know that in January, very early January, we have another Mars Pluto opposition. So it's another time to apply a different strategy and perhaps have a better experience. And that's where I really advise if you have some projects, to just like have projects available in your life where you need to channel really intense energy that you can channel it there. And that's why I love the earth. 
<laughs> Brenda, I love having a big yard and a space to garden and be physical. This is like ultra endurance athletes. I think back to the times when I was running half marathons and things like that, having a yoga practice, having a hot yoga practice, having any kind of exercise routine, having crafts to dig into, artwork to dig into a lot of cooking. Maybe you're cooking for the entire winter and you're filling your whole freezer full of different foods because you just have so much energy or you're baking, baking, baking like crazy. And it's way more than you and your family can have, but you're giving the baked goods to all the neighbors and all the family and friends. So just having some sort of outlet on hand for these times of really strong energy. Maybe you have a dog or doggies and going for walks and caretaking, or maybe it's like, okay, you're going to clean your home. You're going to deep clean the garage or the oven, or you're going to organize, you're going to declutter, whatever it is. It's just so valuable to have that, especially when our mental energy is so high here with Jupiter and Gemini aligning with all of these stars. And just a note too, with the election and all of that, one of the things that just kept coming through in that, the big message is like, don't give your power away. Whether you may be somebody who is really happy with the results, I think it's as much as a trap for being really happy with the results and thinking, oh, we have a savior. And then the other polarity being really unhappy with the results and feeling victimized and feeling like there's no hope. Like either way is a trap being like very emotionally one way or another. So I think our opportunity here is to really call upon neutrality. I know I felt myself oscillating between the two because I have Jupiter and Gemini natally and I was curious and I want to hear all the sides and all the perspectives and all the people and and like listen to the podcasts and hear the different perspectives and all of that, even though I don't identify myself as like a very strong political person. I was really curious actually about this election, found it really fascinating. And just the keep coming back to neutrality and either with extreme disappointment or extreme celebration to see if you can find your your way back to a middle. And that's not to say, you know, spiritually bypass, like, please feel your feelings wherever you're at with all of it. But also to invite in more of that recentering. And I think the Saturn and Pisces stationing direct will be very helpful for that. And yeah, I think that's all I'm going to say about this full moon right now. There's a lot to go into and I hope it's really, really beautiful for you and that you tap into the higher frequencies of it for you. And remember even that little slogan I think I offered in maybe the last lunar update video. I am so grateful to receive the higher frequencies of the transits that that can really work. I've been saying that every day and I really do feel that. So maybe play with that or some authentic version of that if that resonates with you. So the new paradigm hath cometh. <laughs> it really has. And Pluto ingress Aquarius, I think this is a moment that so many of us have been waiting for. So many of us are so excited about and feeling so good about. And I think one of the core messages that I want to include definitely in this video and certainly in my class as well is to let go of any sense of limitation on what this is. Let go of any sense of needing to put this transit in a box. Let go of any sense of limitation of what this means or will look like for you the next 20 years or humanity the next 20 years or the earth the next 20 years or wherever you want to apply this, that we are invited to really embrace 
unlimited possibilities. And how incredibly exciting that is. Again, I'm drawn to all the different galactic alignments in this chart all at once. They're like blinking neon lights looking at me right now. So one that is coming through again to mention, I was talking about this when we were looking at Taurus full moon, that the north node of the moon opposite the supergalactic center, the south node of the moon conjunct the supergalactic center, that our lunar node still in Aries Libra at the time that Pluto re-enters Aquarius is very significant. And the fact that the south node of the moon is conjunct the supergalactic center, it could be anywhere, <laughs> you know, it could literally be anywhere in the sign of Libra or in a different zodiac sign, but that it is conjunct one of the four super cosmic points that we look at in galactic astrology feels extremely significant and extremely powerful and really highlights and underscores the title of the class I'm teaching, Rebirth into Soul Mastery. Because with the South Node, there is that sense of past life that is very strong. Past life, soul mastery coming in very, very strong. And that it's non-local. So it includes past lives on the earth. It includes past lives within the Milky Way galaxy. And it also includes an octave out from that or a zooming out beyond just the Milky Way galaxy to this super galactic center, this super massive black hole around which our Milky Way galaxy is only one of, you know, 30 or so other galaxies that all sourced originated from this super galactic center and are being drawn back towards it. And the super galactic center is operating as this organizer, like a placeholder, giving these galaxies somewhere to be, somewhere to rotate, somewhere to be in cycle, to be in relationship, to be in like a constellation, like a family, a galactic family. A sacred circle is what I'm hearing here. So that our south node of the moon is aligned to the super galactic center. This feels like a super massive activation of our soul consciousness as individuals. I mean, this is huge for those of you who are watching this video who are on a path of spiritual awakening, of remembering who you truly are, of releasing the layers that hide you from your light, from your glory, from your brilliance, from all of the magic and the miracles of your soul's experience, of just like who you really are, like everything that you have experienced and the full breadth and depth and scope of and power, I'm hearing also, of your multidimensional self, this feels like a huge clearing out of anything that is blocking that remembrance. So to allow this super galactic center to vacuum out, suction out, anything that is blocking or obscuring that this could be massive releasing of layers, massive healing, massive ancestral healing, massive cellular healing, DNA healing, RNA healing, physical body healing, galactic ancestral healing, conditioning healing, I mean, just so many different levels, all the way back to our galactic ancestors as Libra zodiac sign is guided by planet Venus, Venus and Capricorn aligned with Lyra constellation, a lath fire star, and this Lyra constellation being one of the constellations very linked to the origin of humanoid consciousness within the Milky Way galaxy. 
So this is extremely, extremely potent. It feels like major crown chakra and throat chakra activation here. So many light workers coming online and the ascension frequencies being really strong with Mercury aligned with Lepus constellation Nihal star. So in Lepus constellation, it's a rabbit in the sky that the helical rising of this constellation was linked to the Christian Easter, which of course was the celebration of Jesus ascending, right? And now that's what we're all on this path of doing, just as Jesus did. We are all on our own unique embodied ascension journeys into more of our light body, into more of our solar Christos unity, unification, consciousness, new paradigm, full embodiment and self-realized avataric mastery, soul consciousness, spirit consciousness, mastery at this time. And, you know, you pick your words for whatever that is, but it makes me think specifically of the ascension that word, ascension, Jesus's ascension, Easter, and our minds getting like a really strong pulse of that, and our communication channels getting a really strong pulse of that, and that that's a pulse that will be streaming through this entire Pluto and Aquarius next 19 to 20 years. So I'm going to cut myself off there because I want to save all of this juicy juice for the Pluto in Aquarius class I'm teaching, which please come and join if that was at all interesting to you. We will be going much, much deeper into it in that class. So one other thing I wanted to share is the Sabian symbol for Taurus 24, the full moon on November 15th. It is an Indian warrior riding fiercely, human scalps hanging from his belt. The keynote, the aggressiveness of human instincts when fighting for their earthly base of operation. In the mythology of early America, the Indian represents the savage, close to nature, and led by primordial instincts. Alas, our present century has revealed that under far less imperative circumstances, so-called civilized man is capable of far more cruel tortures and extermination. This symbol related to a fourth stage seems to imply that violence and aggressiveness are basic components of human nature at the level of the emotions and of a deep-seated identification with a particular culture which insists on regarding men of other cultures as potential enemies. What is being confirmed here is the value of a group of men's differences from other groups. We are still in the period of differentiation, act one of the cyclic process. And the need for a differentiation of human behavior and collective values is still very strong. At the emotional level, Man apparently still has to believe in violence for survival. So I think the key to this Sabian symbol is to in fact invite healing, invite healing into our own inner violent tendencies, our own inner polarities, dualities, places where we're giving our power away. And maybe this is subtle as like a subtle act of violence to oneself with one's speech, one's thinking, self-deprecating thoughts. Maybe it's more violent or aggressive thoughts towards others, whoever the other is. And this illusion of separation, this illusion of scarcity, fear, and lack, and divisiveness, hopelessness, whatever that may be. And to invite in this sense of peace, of nonviolence, of love, and to strengthen that. Strengthen that with every fiber of your being, with every spiritual muscle that you have, and open and receive the grace of peace. Open and receive the grace of forgiveness, of compassion, 
of pure love, of unconditional love, and to empower your peace grid. If you have a peace grid, be in sacred circle, empowering the peace grids, empower the grid of light that's all over the earth. Remember, remember that we have that. Remember the power of that, that these external plays of power are just that. They're external theaters of power. But us, the light workers, the light bringers, we have so much power that our invisible grid of light is extremely powerful. That that this is so much the message too of Scorpio zodiac sign, the message and the medicine of Scorpio zodiac sign is the power of the invisible, the power of our spiritual connections, of our spiritual values of our spiritual security. So lean into that and embrace that and empower that within yourself. A final message to share is this galactic heritage card by Lisa Royal Holt that I pulled for both the Taurus full moon and the Pluto in Aquarius, November 15th and 19th. And this is card number 40, stubbornness, Pleiades, past, Whenever I see this card, I automatically think this is like the quintessential shadow expression of not only Pleiadian energy, but also Taurus energy that can be stuck and stagnant and stubborn. And I don't want to move and I don't want to change. And I am attached to the old, the secure, what has been with the Pleiadians too. This is speaking to having a very idealistic idea about how reality should be and that reality should conform to that ideal reality. And when it did not, that the Pleiadians would get into business and galactic affairs that did not concern them and were not their responsibility and thus take on consequences that were not very pleasing or pleasurable. And this was in past eras of the Pleiadians, higher frequency enlightened Pleiadians have of course evolved beyond this. But I think this card showing up is in what ways are we resisting change In what ways are we denying what is? How can we invite in acceptance of what is? How can we invite in our trust and our faith, our patience and our perseverance in empowering ourselves and empowering the divine orchestration, the larger divine plan that can be very egocentric to think that we know what's best and that our plan for reality in the future is what's best. And so this is like a very humbling card of trusting in the divine plan, trusting in the higher plan, and letting go of any kind of resistance to change, to evolution, letting go of any of those ways that we may be limiting how Pluto and Aquarius is supposed to look too. Yeah. Letting go of those limitations, letting go of of the resistance. And I think this is so much of the moon and Taurus conjunct Uranus that we are breaking free of resistance, of our stubbornness, of stagnation, of any kind of lack of acceptance so that we can spread our wings and fly and we can soar and we can be together in circle, be together in community, be okay with who we are, our diversity, our unity, and really focus on co-creating the higher frequencies in our individual lives, in our communities, and in our global network, in our galactic network, and beyond. So I thank you so much for watching this video. May you have a very happy and blessed full moon. On screen, there are the offerings that I have through the end of the year. I've also opened up 
one-on-one bookings for 2025, so beginning in January. If you know you want a reading with me, go ahead and book in January. Secure your appointment time that you like, and you can learn about the classes, the free distant Reiki share, and look at my readings all on my website, Taylor Norris Reiki. Dot com. It is such an honor and a pleasure to be together as soul family. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo.